The genetic history of Jewish communities starts in the ancient Near East, particularly in the Levant, where both archaeological findings and genetic data come together to show deep ancestral connections. The oldest genetic markers that later became part of Jewish ancestry go back to the Epipaleolithic Natufians, who lived in the Levant around 12,000 years ago. These hunter-gatherer groups, whose remains have been carefully examined through ancient DNA studies, had a unique genetic makeup marked by a large share of basal Eurasian ancestry, a lineage that separated from other Eurasian groups before the main population divisions that happened during the last glacial maximum. The Natufian genetic pattern is especially important because it creates the basic foundation for all later Levantine populations, including the ancestors of Jewish groups. Studies of Natufian remains have shown why chromosomal lineages led by haplogroup E1b1b and early J lineages, genetic markers that stay common in modern Jewish populations across all main branches of the diaspora. This continuity stands as one of the strongest pieces of proof for the native Levantine roots of Jewish ancestry. After the Natufian period, the shift to farming during the Neolithic period introduced new genetic influences to the Levant. Neolithic populations from roughly 10,000 to 6,000 years ago kept the core basal Eurasian component while adding other genetic elements that would later define Bronze Age Levantine populations. These early farming communities built the demographic base on which later Semitic-speaking peoples, including the Proto-Canaanites and eventually the Israelites, would develop. The Bronze Age Canaanite populations, thriving between roughly 2000 to 500 and 1200 BC, mark a key middle stage in the genetic history of Jewish ancestry. Detailed ancient DNA studies of Bronze Age remains from major Levantine sites, including Sidon, Megiddo, and other archaeological places across modern-day Israel, Lebanon, and Syria, have shown a consistent genetic pattern that creates the direct ancestral part of modern Jewish populations. Bronze Age Canaanites had a genetic makeup that was about 50% from local Levantine Neolithic populations and 50% from Zagros and Caucasus-related herding populations who had moved into the area during earlier millennia. This admixture event, which happened during the Chalcolithic and early Bronze Age periods, formed a stable genetic pattern that would continue through later historical periods and stay detectable in modern populations. The Y-chromosomal landscape of Bronze Age Canaanites was led by haplogroups J1P58, J2M172, and E1B1B M123, lineages that still show high frequencies in today's Jewish populations worldwide. The survival of these paternal lineages across more than 3,000 years shows remarkable genetic continuity despite many historical upheavals, migrations, and demographic shifts. Mitochondrial DNA studies from the same period show maternal lineages that also persist in modern Jewish populations though with more diversity reflecting the complicated patterns of marriage and migration that defined ancient Near Eastern societies. Autosomal genome-wide analysis, which looks at genetic variation across the entire nuclear genome, rather than focusing only on uniparental markers, gives the most complete picture of Bronze Age Canaanite ancestry. Modern Jewish populations, no matter their geographic origin or cultural subdivision, share important genetic components with these ancient Levantine peoples, showing that the Canaanite substrate creates the main ancestral foundation of Jewish genetic identity. The shift from Bronze Age Canaanite societies to the appearance of distinct Israelite populations during the Iron Age marks a critical moment in Jewish genetic and cultural history. Archaeological findings from the Israelite settlement period, starting around 1200 BC, suggest that the early Israelites were not foreign invaders, who pushed out existing populations, but instead arose from within existing Canaanite societies through processes of cultural separation and religious innovation. Genetic evidence strongly backs this archaeological view. Studies of ancient DNA from Iron Age sites linked with early Israelite settlements show clear continuity with earlier Bronze Age Canaanite populations, with minimal evidence for large-scale population replacement or foreign genetic influence. This continuity appears across all levels of genetic analysis, from Y-chromosomal and mitochondrial DNA lineages to genome-wide autosomal patterns. 
The creation of early Israelite identity seems to have been joined by limited gene flow from nearby Aramean and Phoenician populations, reflecting the complex political and cultural interactions that marked the Iron Age Levant. However, these interactions did not fundamentally change the underlying genetic structure of the population. Instead, they added minor extra components that enrich the existing Canaanite genetic substrate without overpowering it. This period also saw the creation of religious and cultural practices that would become central to Jewish identity, including the growth of monotheistic beliefs, dietary laws, and ritual practices that would later help genetic isolation through endogamous marriage patterns. While the genetic impact of these cultural innovations would not become fully clear until later historical periods, their creation during the Iron Age built the framework for the maintenance of genetic distinctiveness that marks Jewish populations to the present day. The Assyrian conquest of the Northern Kingdom of Israel in 722 BC and the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem and deportation of Judean elites in 586 BC marked the start of the Jewish diaspora and brought new genetic influences into Jewish populations. The forced migrations linked with these conquests brought Jewish populations into contact with Mesopotamian peoples, creating chances for genetic admixture that would have lasting effects on Jewish population structure. The impact of these exilic periods is most clearly seen in the genetic profiles of modern Iraqi and Iranian Jewish populations who preserve measurable amounts of Mesopotamian and Persian ancestry alongside their dominant Levantine genetic component. However, the genetic impact of the Assyrian and Babylonian exiles was neither uniform nor overwhelming. Large portions of the Judean population stayed in the Levant throughout these periods, keeping the mainly Canaanite-derived genetic profile that defines the ancestral Jewish gene pool. The returnees from Babylonian exile, as recorded in biblical sources and backed by archaeological evidence, appear to have successfully rejoined with the remaining local population, suggesting that genetic continuity was kept despite the political and demographic disruptions of the exilic period. The Persian period, starting with the conquest of Babylon by Cyrus, the Great in 539 BC brought in an era of relative stability and autonomy for Jewish populations throughout the Persian Empire. This period saw the creation of Jewish communities across the vast stretch of the Persian territories, from Central Asia to the Indian Ocean, building the foundation for later Mizrahi Jewish populations. The conquest of the Persian Empire by Alexander the Great in 331 BC started the Hellenistic period, which brought new genetic influences to Jewish populations through increased contact with Greek and Anatolian populations. The creation of Greek cities throughout the former Persian territories and the promotion of Greek culture and intermarriage made chances for genetic exchange between Jewish communities and their Greek neighbors. Genetic evidence for Hellenistic period mixture is found in the presence of Y-chromosomal haplogroups G2A, T1A, and R1B in modern Jewish populations, lineages that are typical of Anatolian and Southeastern European populations, rather than the native Levantine gene pool. The Roman period, starting with the conquest of the Hasmonean Kingdom in 63 BC, peaked in the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 AD, and the following dispersal of Jewish populations throughout the Roman Empire. The most important genetic changes happened in Jewish communities that settled in southern Europe, especially in the Italian peninsula and the Iberian peninsula, where Jewish populations mixed with local Roman and pre-Roman populations to a degree that is detectable in modern genetic analysis. The Jewish communities that set themselves up in the Iberian peninsula during the Roman and early medieval periods grew into the distinctive Sephardic branch of world Jewry, marked by a unique genetic profile that combines core Levantine ancestry with significant Southern European admixture. Genetic analysis of modern Sephardic populations shows roughly 60 to 70% Levantine ancestry, with the rest coming from admixture with local Iberian and broader Mediterranean populations. Why chromosomal analysis of Sephardic populations shows the survival of core Middle Eastern lineages, particularly J1 and J2 haplogroups, alongside the presence of European lineages that record admixture with local populations. Mitochondrial DNA studies show a more complex pattern, 
with substantial representation of both Middle Eastern and European maternal lineages, suggesting that patterns of admixture may have differed between paternal and maternal lines, possibly reflecting cultural preferences for patrilineal descent combined with occasional incorporation of local women into Jewish communities. The expulsion of Jews from Spain in 1492 and from Portugal in 1497 scattered Sephardic populations throughout the Mediterranean region, the Ottoman Empire, and eventually to the Americas and other global destinations. The Jewish communities of the Middle East and North Africa, collectively known as Mizrahi Jews, represent the populations with the strongest genetic continuity to ancient Levantine ancestry. These communities, which include Iraqi, Iranian, Syrian, Yemeni, and North African Jewish populations, kept continuous presence in regions next to or covering the ancient Jewish homeland, resulting in genetic profiles that most closely match reconstructed ancient Judean ancestry. Genetic analysis of Mizrahi populations shows remarkably high frequencies of Y-chromosomal haplogroups J1, J2, and E1b1b, the same lineages that dominated ancient Canaanite and early Israelite populations. The survival of these lineages at high frequencies, often exceeding 70 to 80% of the total Y-chromosomal diversity in some populations, shows exceptional genetic continuity across more than 2,000 years of diaspora existence. Iraqi Jewish populations, whose ancestors trace their presence in Mesopotamia to the Babylonian exile, show genetic profiles that combine dominant Levantine ancestry with minor Mesopotamian components. Iranian Jewish Populations display similar patterns, with core Middle Eastern ancestry supplemented by small amounts of Persian and Central Asian genetic components. Syrian Jewish communities, keeping continuous presence in regions right next to the ancient Jewish homeland, show genetic profiles that are virtually identical to reconstructed ancient Levantine populations. Yemeni Jewish populations present a particularly interesting case study in genetic continuity and isolation. Despite their geographic location at the southern edge of the Arabian Peninsula, Yemeni Jews keep strong genetic connections to other Jewish populations and show limited admixture with local Arabian populations. This genetic distinctiveness, kept over centuries of residence in Yemen, shows the effectiveness of cultural and religious practices in preserving community boundaries even under conditions of geographic isolation and minority status. Ashkenazi Jewish populations who make up the largest single branch of world Jewry, present a unique genetic profile that reflects both their Levantine origins and their complex demographic history in Europe. The formation of Ashkenazi Jewish populations appears to have happened through the migration of small founder populations from the Mediterranean region, likely via Italy, into the Rhineland and other areas of medieval Europe during the first millennium AD. Genetic analysis shows that Ashkenazi populations get roughly 50 to 60% of their ancestry from Middle Eastern sources, with the rest contributed by Southern European populations, particularly those from the Italian peninsula. This genetic makeup suggests that the founding populations of Ashkenazi Jewry were already admixed populations that had taken in European genetic components during their residence in Southern Europe before migrating to Northern and Eastern European territories. The demographic history of Ashkenazi populations was deeply shaped by a severe population bottleneck that happened during the medieval period, likely during the 14th century in connection with persecution and population decimation during the Black Death period. This bottleneck reduced the effective population size to as few as 350 individuals, creating the conditions for strong founder effects and genetic drift that continue to mark Ashkenazi populations. The results of this population bottleneck are clear in multiple aspects of Ashkenazi genetic structure. The raised frequency of many recessive genetic disorders, including Tay-Sachs disease, Gaucher disease, and Canavan disease, reflects the amplification of rare disease-causing variants through genetic drift in a small population. The limited mitochondrial DNA diversity with four major haplogroups, K1A1B1A, H7C, N1B, and J1, accounting for roughly 40% of all Ashkenazi maternal lineages, similarly reflects the restricted genetic diversity that resulted from the medieval bottleneck. Why chromosomal analysis of Ashkenazi populations shows a different pattern 
with greater diversity in paternal lineages that include both Middle Eastern haplogroups and European lineages introduced through admixture. This imbalance between paternal and maternal genetic diversity suggests that the founding populations of Ashkenazi Jewry included both Middle Eastern Jewish men and European women who converted to Judaism or were incorporated into Jewish communities through marriage. The Holocaust represents the most catastrophic demographic event in Jewish history, resulting in the systematic murder of roughly 6 million Jews between 1941 and 1945 and fundamentally changing the genetic landscape of world Jewry. The persecution disproportionately affected Ashkenazi populations in Eastern Europe, wiping out entire communities and their unique genetic lineages that had developed over centuries of relative isolation. Among the most remarkable findings in Jewish population genetics is the genetic distinctiveness of the Kohanim, the Jewish priestly caste, whose patrilineal descent is traditionally traced to Aaron, the brother of Moses. Why chromosomal analysis of men claiming Kohanim status reveals a distinctive genetic signature known as the Cohen modal haplotype, a specific pattern of Y chromosomal short tandem repeat markers within haplogroup J1P58. The Cohen modal haplotype is found at raised frequencies among Kohanim from diverse Jewish populations, including Ashkenazi, Sephardic, and Mizrahi communities suggesting that the patrilineal genetic signature of the ancient priesthood has been kept across all major branches of the Jewish diaspora. Molecular dating analysis of the Cohen modal haplotype suggests that the common ancestor of modern Kohanim lived roughly 3,000 years ago, consistent with the biblical timeline for the establishment of the Israelite priesthood. Ashkenazi and Sephardic populations, despite their different geographic origins and cultural developments, show closer genetic relationships to each other than to their European neighbors, supporting their origin from common Middle Eastern ancestral populations. Mizrahi populations generally cluster closer to inferred ancestral Middle Eastern populations, reflecting their greater genetic continuity and reduced levels of admixture with non-Middle Eastern populations. Ethiopian Beta Israel populations, who kept Jewish religious practices for centuries in isolation from other Jewish communities, show genetic profiles that are mainly East African with only minor Middle Eastern components. The limited Middle Eastern ancestry in Beta Israel populations may reflect ancient contact with Jewish traders or missionaries, but the genetic evidence suggests that the majority of Beta Israel ancestry comes from local Ethiopian populations who adopted Jewish religious practices rather than from migration of substantial numbers of Middle Eastern Jewish settlers. Indian Bene Israel populations present a similar pattern, with genetic analysis showing roughly equal proportions of South Asian and Middle Eastern ancestry. This genetic makeup suggests either substantial admixture between a small number of Middle Eastern Jewish founders and local Indian populations or the adoption of Jewish identity by local populations with following limited Middle Eastern genetic input. These outlier populations highlight the difference between genetic ancestry and religious or cultural identity in Jewish communities. The spread of Jewish religious and cultural practices has occasionally happened through conversion and cultural transmission rather than migration, creating communities that keep Jewish identity while having distinctive genetic profiles reflecting their local origins. Contemporary Israeli Jewish populations show evidence of increasing genetic mixing as marriages between individuals from different diaspora backgrounds become more common. The genetic substructure that marked separate Ashkenazi, Sephardic, and Mizrahi populations is slowly fading in younger Israeli generations, replaced by a more uniform genetic profile. The genetic origins of Jewish populations represent one of the most carefully studied topics in human population genetics, producing insights that light up both the ancient history of the Middle East and the complex demographic processes that have shaped human populations throughout recorded history.